So I got this email from somebody and um, effectively asked about how to, how to include whole transport layers and things like that in the simulation. So I get this question quite a lot, so I thought I'll just talk, talk, talk through um, the answer. Now, I'll read it first and I'll sort of explore the simulation or we'll explore the simulation together. Um, first he says, um, I'd like to ask some questions. So in the default organic solar cell, I'd like to know how to set the electrical parameters of the p-dot, so permittivity, etc., blah, blah, blah. And he says, when I set the p-dot to an active layer, um, I get this error. And then, yeah, so that, that's, I'll sort of paraphrase a bit there. Um, but um, effectively, the question is, how do we include p-dot as an active layer in the simulation? So let's go to the simulation to start with. So this is a standard P3HTP CPM uh, simulation. And there we go, it runs. So I've just run that simulation and we get a JV curve out of it. Now, if we look at the layer editor, there's generally speaking three different types of layers in the device. There's a contact, which is here, so there's a contact. There's an other, which means it's not a contact and it's not an active layer. And then there's an active layer, and this should actually be set to contact, but I'm not going to change it now. Um, now, in the active layer, we solve the drift diffusion equation. So we solve the electron equation, the whole equation, and and, thi and things and, and recombination traps and all those types of things. In the other layers, we don't solve the electrical equations um, at all. Now, the reason we do this, and we, the reason we only solve the drift diffusion equation in this layer, is because we make the assumption that uh, that the aluminium is very well conducting, and we also make the assumption the p-dot is very well conducting, so is the ITO. So we don't bother solving the drift fusion equations in any layer but the active layer, the actual active layer of the cell. Now usually this is a very, very good assumption, um, and I recommend, unless you're specifically interested in the p-dot, um, you don't try to make this layer active. I um, suggest you only make the active layer active, because you, it just makes the simulation much, much more complicated. But um, in this case, we're going to try and make it, we're going to try and do a simulation with the PDOP active and the P3HP PCBM active. And you might do this because you're actually interested specifically in, say, the band alignment of the PDOP with the P3HP PCBM or something like that. Um, but that's really the only reason I recommend doing this. So um, if we try and run this, as the gentleman says, it, it crashes. So basically, it says, Oops, um, whoops, sorry, wrong. Oh, well. anyway, for some, oh no, here we go. Yes, here's the error message. So basically it crashes and it says that it's not working. So why is this? Well, let's go and look at the electrical parameters and let's have a look at what's going on here. So the first thing we notice is that number of traps, the so number of trap states is five here and it's 20 here. Now, it's just a, a fact, I've probably got to change this somewhere sometime, but the number of traps in each material layer must be the same or the simulation will simply not work. Um, the other thing uh, we notice, um, so if we, yeah, the other thing we notice is that the electron affinity, so this is effectively the LUMO level here, is 3.8 EV, and the band gap, so that's the HIMO-LUMO difference, is 1.1 EV. If we look at the p-dot that we've introduced, it's got eg of 1.3. So I'm just going to set that to 1.1 for now. And it's got a electron affinity of, of, of um, 1.6. So it's got very, very different um, uh, values of electron affinity. So if we try and plot out that band structure, let's see if this works. Let's try and plot out that band structure in the optical window. So this is what it sort of looks like. We've got a massive offset there in energy, which is super crazy. It's like a massive, massive heterojunction, which is, I mean, I don't know how much current you're going to get flowing over there. Um, probably not much, but also that's going to be very difficult numerically to solve. Generally speaking, physical problems that are unlikely to work um, are difficult to solve mathematically. So for example, um, you know, probably not much current is going to flow over there, or at least this in this direction. So the model is probably going to struggle solving that. So what I always suggest when you're trying to do heterojunctions and things like this with multiple layers is kick off the simulation by setting all the parameters in both layers to the same. So if we go back to the electrical parameter window, I would set, so we've got an electron affinity here of 3.8, set this here in the, in the, in the P3 to PCM to 3.8, 
Now let's um, you know let's set the mobilities to be the same. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll go for this one here. One to minus one. We'll set all the mobilities to be the same. Um, and let's also just make it symmetric. Um, uh, so here we've actually got the effective density of states is very asymmetric. So let's just set this to be very symmetric too. Um, that's that's that. Let's just check the carry densities on the contacts. Make sure that they're below the effective density of states. So what I've done now, if we if we rerun the this sort of this band structure, we've effectively got a very a flat device, and I've made I've made it as sort of as symmetrical as possible. Now you might say, well, that's not realistic. Well, yes, clearly this isn't realistic to start off with, but what we'll have here is a simulation that will definitely run. So if we run this, we get a JV curve. Oops, there's a JV curve that works. Now what we can do, now we've got a simulation that actually works, we can go back in and step by step change the electrical parameters to things that we might want more. So, you know, it might be more physical. So, for example, we might want a bigger band gap here, so we, in the, in the p.pss, so say you set that to 1.5. Um, and then rerun that, and it still works. And if we sort of look at the situation here, you see we've got a, a bit of an offset in the band gap there. So then the, the trick is to slowly move the simulation towards something that you physically physically want uh, to solve for. Um, and then when it doesn't work, you know at what point you've sort of upset the simulation by putting in some non-physical parameter. So that's what I always suggest. I suggest start off with something that's symmetric, works, and then slowly vary the, the parameters of one layer um, until you get something that you actually want to simulate. And that way you know where the problems are if you have problems. So what was the other question? Um, yeah, so now I would like to set the p-dot layer as a dielectric non-conducting. Uh, I mean, if you want to be non, if you want the p dot layer to be non-conducting, we could just you could just set the mobility to be very very low, um, but obviously, say to minus ten there, and you can play with the dielectric versus dielectric relative permittivity there. So you, I don't know, set it to say ten, which is probably not realistic at all. But uh, uh, but obviously, this you about now effectively you've got a, a a carrier blocking layer here so the jv curve you'll get out of this so if we look at this the, this is this will be now now be a carrier blocking layer so the jv curve you get out of this uh will probably be quite terrible um so i think that's answered that question i finally just mentioned something about these error messages if you get this um no i think what i'll do is i'll explain this error message in detail i think i think uh I'll do that. So I'm now going to explain this error message. So um, in the in 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 the in the in the device, you've got the Lumo and you've got the Homo, L and H, and in there you've got um, you've got various. So in the simulation, you've got various trap levels. So you've got sort of, well various trap levels like this, um, and in here we can have sort of trapped carriers. Now. If we zoom in on one of these, um, so if we, if we now sort of zoom in on this trap distribution here, so I'll, I mean, that's what we're zooming in, I'll get rid of this, but that's what we're looking at. So let's just look at the LUMO. So this is the LUMO. Now, generally speaking, we've got something like an exponential density of states. So this, of, of, of traps, so this is, this is the traps here. And generally this has a form of something like N exponential minus energy over the um, Ubach energy. So this here, this energy, is effectively the depth down here. Um, so how, how far we are down here. And this is effectively the tail slope. So this is an exponential density of, of states. And in the model we break this up into, so this density of trap states, into various um, energy levels. Now, one of the important things you've got to do um, to do, for example, we're, if I want, and each one of these, each one of these um, traps has got a different uh, Fermi level. So each one of these has got own independent Fermi level. And for each mesh point in the device, you'll have a whole set of these traps, all with independent Fermi levels underneath each other. 
So when we look at these traps, we've got to do things to these traps. For example, if I want to know that the number of trapped carriers in that trap, so this is what we call this trap zero, one, two. So the number of trapped carriers there, we've effectively got to integrate, um, say, the Fermi Dirac function um, as a function of energy and the Fermi level and then times some density of state, so n, I haven't left myself enough room, e to the minus e over u, d, e, that should be d, e. Um, and uh, this integral here, integrals in computers are very, very slow to evaluate. So this integral is super slow to evaluate. And you can't do this during the simulation. So what I generally do is I evaluate all integrals like this uh, before um, the simulation runs. And I store them in a lookup table. So effectively I have, I don't know, like here I have, say, I don't know, E of F. And here I have ele electron density. So rather than trying to evaluate this during the simulation, I just do a lookup on this. And when you get this error, uh, wherever it is, Oh, no, it's here. When you get this error here, what this means is, effectively, you've asked for a Fermi level. So basically, you're asking for, I don't know, holes with this Fermi level. But it said, I've only calculated um, the d density of holes for the trap states for Fermi levels between this and this. So effectively, this error is saying, in a rather roundabout way, you're asking me for something very unphysical. I don't have the value of Fermi level, this value of Fermi level in my lookup table, wherever it is in my lookup table, here. Um, and if we go back to the error message, it's got infinite. So clearly we've not calculated the value of an infinite Fermi level. And what this, what this means is you really ask to do something physically wrong. So if you get errors like this, it means, you know, you're probably asking to do something that wouldn't work in reality, like, you know, calculate the current flow over a massive heterojunction, you probably just have zero would be the answer. So that's it. Um, I hope this was interesting and answered that point. So um, yeah, thank you very much for your mail.